Hello everyone, I'm uh, Chris van Scharenberg, Head of Collections at the Tank Museum. You may have uh, come across me before at one of the Tank Workshop Diaries. This is now week nine of our museum closure. Some of us are still uh, working here, only a few, myself included, to keep an eye on the collection and obviously do some planning for when we uh, reopen again. So one of the things we've been doing in the last few weeks is making sure the collection is obviously safe. We walked through all the buildings, the archive, the vehicle stores and the workshop to make sure it's all safe and secure. And in recent weeks, we also started turning over some engines and running some vehicles and doing some battery charging to make sure by the time we're back up and running again, at least the vehicles had a bit of a turnover at least the engines and the batteries are not completely flat because as you can imagine with about 55 vehicles, a lot of batteries uh, to uh, maintain and yeah, sitting for running vehicles to sit for months on end is, is not a good thing with all the lubrication running down into the engines. So I've been doing our best with uh, limited um, resources to um, keep it uh, ticking over and most importantly, keep it uh, secure for the collection. So. I'll take you with me on a walk to the workshop. You'll recognize it from a previous uh, Tank Workshop Diaries. Do, do a very quick update. Not much will have changed because, of course, we have now been closed for nine weeks. But I'll also take you into some of the vehicle sheds to have a look around and uh, show you some of our interesting vehicles. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, yeah, join me for this walk. So straight into the uh, machine shop with the the lathe and the milling machine here. Um, this is a shock absorber and a spring unit of a of the Valentine. It took uh, it took them quite a bit to get one to bits, but I'm glad we did because if you look on the uh, on the shaft here, there's a lot of deep pitting. This has been there for years, but clearly the vehicle has been running with it. So we're currently looking at getting a new. Um, a new tube for the suspension units. It's a particular type of material uh, made in a particular way. It's a three inch diameter um, shaft for the um, shock absorber. So yeah, Jonathan took this to bits and he'll tell you more about it during the um, Valentine update. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite exciting work. There's always, there's always more wrong with it than you think, but it's a, quite an interesting challenge to find the right material and to fix it rather than just uh, leave it. There's a T72. We haven't been able to do much with it. We're waiting from our uh, our friends from Slovakia. They, they came, remember they came earlier this year and they're coming back. Uh, they've sent us some tooling and some parts. Uh, we're just waiting for the travel arrangement to ease and hopefully they can join us again because yeah that they really know their they know their T72s. There's a Daimler ferret it's been wedged in between the T72 and the uh, Mark 1 Centurion. Um, yeah, it's just waited to uh, get out again. What we have managed to do is charge the batteries and uh, the smaller vehicles we can happily run inside here because we have a massive, I'll try to show you, we have a massive exhaust system there. We have the individual exhaust arms that you can put on the exhaust, but these big fans at the top of the building, they suck out any fumes in, uh, in the building. So we'll try to run it again shortly. Yeah, our very significant Mark 1 Centurion, just being stored here at the moment. It's going back in the World War II gallery later this year, but uh, it lives safely in here. We don't want to move it too often because it's such a key vehicle in the collection. There's one of our five rides. We have four of these um, four vehicle rides, uh, one to four. Number three is uh, in bits at the moment. It's our Bitzer. It sits uh, somewhere back there, actually. Uh, just behind the Centurion, you can see it with the cap already off. So yeah, they do a lot of uh, miles throughout the year. Obviously, unfortunately not this year, but hopefully we can uh, start it going again before too long. There's a, a meteor, a section meteor. that was given to us by the Defence Academy in Shrivenham. That's uh, ready to go on display in the new World War II gallery. There, of course, is the Fury Sherman. With The, uh, the work was done early in the year by uh, Case... August and Peter from the Netherlands, they did some great work on the engine. Uh, they also f uh, discovered that the, the engines, both engines, twin diesel, are running with the wrong type of injector, so it's actually underpowered as a result. And they've kindly ordered, found the correct um, 
injectors for is and ordered these. So literally in the last few weeks, we've managed to process the paperwork, so they should be heading this way. I mean, it still needs a lot of other work, this, this vehicle. It's been quite uh, used a lot over the years. So next year, we're going to do the suspension, the horizontal suspension. You could argue you should all do it in one go, and it sometimes is easier to completely strip a vehicle. But then, of course, the vehicle will be out of action for a long time. And we have so many other projects going on, you have to be selective sometimes about the different tasks and only overhaul particular systems at a time. So we did the engine and the fuel system over the last few years, and next year the plan is to uh, really start looking at the suspension. Because, of course, in the last few years we had the Matilda and we have the Valentine. So, yeah, we have to be uh, realistic and selective. There's a Detroit diesel on a test stand. You see the radiator on the right-hand side. So this is one of the engines for the M5 freight vehicle rides vehicles. So we have four running. We have uh, quite a few spares that we use for spare sources. So it's a, it's a very reliable um, engine. Uh, it's a great engine, but uh, of course they need work as well. So we had, I think on this one, we did some work on the uh, cross drive, which we're looking at here. So that connects the engine with the gearbox. I think there were some bearings that were replaced in there. Now we tested with the radiator here on this test stand to make sure it's safe and sound, and then it can go in the vehicles. There's still the Swedish 202. Um, work still ongoing with the fuel system mostly that was being, is being prepared for tank first. There's a Chaffee. Yeah, it's just waiting. It's going back to uh, an external company that uh, restored it. It's privately owned, but it's a loan to the museum. And we we'll just keep the batteries charged at the moment to make sure they don't go down. But it's a running vehicle, but it needs a bit more work. There's another Meteor engine. Personally, think every household should have one. But um, this one was acquired just before the lockdown at an auction for a, a fair price. It's an overhauled engine in the early 90s. This is, of course, when the Army still had the... Um, the 165 Centurion Avery that was first still used in the First Gulf War. Uh, so that's why they, of course, had to keep the parts supply available. So yeah, they were early, overall in the early 90s, or 92, it actually says there on the uh, cylinder head. Because we operate currently three Meteors, one in the 105 Centurion, our running vehicle, which is currently undergoing a bit of an overall, uh, the Comet, and the Centurion Recovery, which we'll have a look at later. So three engines running straight away. So we currently have quite a few of these boxed engines because the thinking is while we can still get them, let's do it uh, for a reasonable price because they're only going to get more difficult to obtain in the future. There's the Valentine that we looked at before. And then Jonathan, as I said, will do an update at his next uh, project update with the suspension mostly off now. So we're now just waiting for the bearings and the, um, the shaft, the new shaft that we needed to get the suspension back together. But of course, at the moment, everything is a little bit on hold. So 432, I'm not sure if it was here last time. It was used for driver training. We have three currently running, and it's a perfect vehicle for driver training. It's relatively light. Uh, you can have an instructor and commander just behind the driver, and it's all the basics of a tracked vehicle. So we do our H license, as it's called, the track laying license with Babcock across the road. Um, so we train some, they train some of their staff with our vehicle and we, we manage to always get some volunteers and staff on it as well. So it's a good uh, partnership. All our apprentices, three apprentices and two volunteers, managed to get their age license done. And then the Vickers Light Mark IV, the engine and gearbox are now back in the vehicle. So you can see there's the engine and the gearbox and the steering arrangement. You can see the, the steering clutches and the uh, brake bands. So for the drive shafts then to go to the, well, big hole there at the moment where, where the final drive sits for then the, uh, the power transmission to the track. So here's the, uh, here are the final drives. One is in bits, and this is the one, as you can see. But yeah, this final drive um, transfers the power from the engine and the gearbox to the tracks. So and then finally in the clean room, um, <laughs> more meteors. <laughs> Uh, that's the one we looked at last time, and I think I showed you the uh, spare engine, sorry, the spare banks, had some bank arrangements. And this motor is currently just sitting on a bit of a pallet, but it's we're making a stand for it. That's the engine out of our 105 gun tank that was actually yeah, modified to a 105 Avery, but we've taken the plow and the um, fascine holder off it. But that was our running Centurion, but this engine developed uh, quite a bad water leak. So we decided um, we have, as I mentioned, three running um, meteor engines. 
we're very keen to um, learn to overhaul these or at least repairs on these because it's it's an engine we consider we want to run well into the future and we want to build up the knowledge and the spares and the um, the tooling to be able to do this. So we're going to put this on a stand, ideally a rotating stand, um, acquire the tooling and we already have quite a few of the spares needed. But anything you can help with, uh, if you know of a good engine stand for a meteor, ideally rotating. Uh, if you know about meteor tooling and spares, we would like to hear from you because it's, as I said, it's, a, it's an engine we're very uh, keen to. It's such a great iconic engine. We're, so please let us know if you can help. One of the things I mentioned was about the challenge of keeping batteries charged up and engines turned over. So we're here in the tank story hall inside the museum with the Panzer III and we managed to turn the engine over with the starting motor and we charged the batteries. I'm just going to have a quickly show you the back of the uh, engine deck of the Panzer III. Because they obviously have been sitting for quite a few months now with our uh, events not happening earlier in the year, especially Tiger Day when this one would have been out. Uh, so the least we can do is at least turn the engines over. So there we have the two batteries next to the uh, next to the engine. So we it's completely isolated when we put the charges on it. With the petrol powered one, we always manage make sure we stay with it during the day. We don't let it on overnight because of any potential fumes and sparks. But um, it should all be safe. To be fair, they're sealed batteries, and these trickle charges are built for that purpose. Use these type of um, trickle charges. Yeah, they recharge quite quickly. So now we're going to have a quick look at the Tiger. So here's the back end of 131, as you'll recognize. Um, you'll see a big sheet over it. It was intended, there was some building work going to be next to it on our door, where the tiger always leaves the museum, uh, but that was cancelled, but we had it all covered to avoid any dust going on the vehicle. So yeah, we turned it over. There is one of our two uh, regular drivers, especially came in to help us out with uh, turning the engine over using the inertia starter. We didn't want to put any strain on the electric starter. Of course, it has been quite a while since it was last run and uh, we're actually doing a bit of research on the Tiger what would be a good interval every year how often to run it you don't want to run it too often for wear and tear but if you don't run it often enough you have problems as well with lubrication and condensation that's a slow start we'll give it another one yeah at least there's no lock there want me to join in no not yet i'll just get it a bit faster you can't hurry it, it takes its own time I only pull on the upstroke. I don't push down because there's no point, it goes away with it. Well, there's a few rotations there, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent, thank you. It's quite strange to do it without an audience, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are at one of our vehicle stores. I'll show you some of our uh, running vehicles that you may recognize from some of our events. Another 432 that we also use for the driver training that I mentioned earlier. Hence the uh, L plate. So this one is a desert edition. Has an air conditioning unit on the back as well. So yeah, between uh, the three, we always spread the load a little bit of the use of these vehicles. A lot of driver training, they're practical vehicles to operate. And we also use them during tanks and actions uh, because we can put people in the back. So for the, the role that was obviously intended for the armored personnel carrier. A vehicle still in use today. Very great success story, really, in the British Army service. You can still see drive around Bovington for driver training today. Behind it, not a real armored vehicle, but uh, more of a... Supply vehicle to the armoured vehicles, an Alvis stalwart, built in Coventry with the same 6x6 uh, wheel arrangement, engine and gearbox as the, um, the Alvis uh, Saladin, for example, uh, which is also somewhere here in the shed, I'll show later. So you yeah, have uh, B80, Rolls-Royce engine in the back, yeah, great little vehicle to run around. I mentioned earlier our Centurion Recovery, the ARV, the Armoured Recovery Vehicle. We used it a lot last year during the vehicle move because it's uh, it's relatively light for a, for a recovery tank anyway. 
And it's also petrol powered, has the, uh, the Hush Puppy tracks, as you can see, the rubber tracks, and because it's petrol powered, and it has a manual gearbox, very good to use in a relatively smaller space like the exhibition space. So yeah, very maneuverable. There's a Moak Piranha, so sort of the, the mother vehicle, I guess, of the Moak family. Fortunately, without a turret, we were given to this, which uh, we were given this vehicle in running state a few years back, but we have no turret. But it's still up and running, so we're going to use it for the tanks and action display. There's our Mark IV replica, so the right combination of vehicles here. Um, normally lived in the VCC, in a vehicle conservation center, but we decided to put the, chief, the uh, chieftain in its place because the chieftain and the more modern tanks are a bit more vulnerable to temperature changes than the replica is, so we always have to be a bit selective what we park where. There's one of our four Leopard 1s, uh, 23C, ex-Canadian vehicle. You can see the maple leaf there on the uh, turret. And this was the one where um, Case and Co. from the Netherlands changed the um, hydraulic pump unit for the turret. So we have four, we have a pre-production vehicle, we have a German Leopard 1, and then we have the two Canadian ones, and they yeah, are very good. Practical vehicle and a great, great tank. There's a Land Rover Ford Control, quite a unique vehicle in its own right, um, that we sometimes use for events when we go to external events. So it's a road registered vehicle. We have an unusual one here as well, the uh, South African Buffel anti-mine vehicle. You can see the, the shape of the cab and the, uh, the crew department in the back with the V-shape to, to disperse any mine blast that was um, designed really for their for the conflict in southwestern Africa when they were involved there. Uh, it's based on a Unimog chassis, so the whole frame, engine, gearbox is Unimog, the German uh, Mercedes Unimog off-road truck. You see that all the time with military vehicles, taking something that's already being built and modified. So we just had quite a bit of repaired on, on its uh, brake system. The air assist brake system was faulty and it's been repaired. There's the M113, so the, um, the American v equivalent of the FV432, the Fighting Vehicle 432 that we looked at earlier. Again, it's an ex-Canadian vehicle. Uh, there's a maple leaf somewhere there. Yes, there it is. So we have a lot of good Canadian vehicles. They've always been kind to us, like with the Leopards, to donate some really nice vehicles to us. See if we can fit through here. There's the Elvis Saladin. Again, I just mentioned uh, as part of the same family of the Elvis stalwart with the uh, BAT and the six-wheel drive. This one has actually been re-engined with um, Perkins Diesel, but it still has the uh, pre-selected gearbox. The nice thing is it's a road-registered vehicle as well, so we can occasionally take it on the road, which is actually quite good, just from a test run point of view to get them up to temperature and up to speed, because the problem often is with the short arena displays that vehicles never quite get up to temperature. You see a lot of cabling running here. You may wonder why that is. We're charging a lot of these vehicles. We're putting on trickle charges. should be somewhere here. There it is. That's for the uh, M113. There's the uh, Cougar, sort of part of the same family as the Moak. 6x6, again, Canadian vehicle. Um, really great condition, this one. Uh, but yeah, a really nice example. There's the back of the Centurion Avery. Hope I fit through here. So we again, we operated this vehicle a few weeks back just to get, get the uh, all the the liquid's going and the moisture out and the engine's running and the battery's topped up. So this vehicle is quite interesting. It has actually three engines. So the main engine, the Meteor, it has a B60 engine to, uh, to operate the winch. And of course the Meteor itself, or the tank itself, the vehicle itself, has a Morris side valve engine as a generator unit. So yeah, three, three motors in here somewhere. You recognize it straight away, T3485. This was our running vehicle. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to, uh, we had to park it up because there were too many faults. So it's one of those that uh, we're always going to do next, but it never quite happens. But hopefully, not too long now. It's all there. It just needs, uh, yeah, it needs a bit of work. There's the uh, Brazilian Urutu. Again, that's a vehicle that we have two. So the thinking is, if you have two, we can operate one. So what we then do, we don't take any of the bits from the other one. If there's something breaks, we try to get a replacement part or we fix it by remaking it. We never strip the reference vehicles as such for parts. But uh, yeah, this hopefully can be added again to the running fleet when we have time. Yeah, a selection of stuff in here, including the entire CVRT family. That really should be in the Vehicle Conservation Center because it's a better environment in there. And these are the reference vehicles. 
So once we um, have a bit of a clear out in the vehicle conservation center, these go back in there. But yeah, we've got the entire, fam well, almost the entire family. So at the far end, again, the, the, base, the base vehicle, I guess, the Scorpion. The Scimitar, the Canon, what a great vehicle, still in use. Um, now, of course, th those still in use now have been re-engined. This is still the, uh, the traditional petrol one, the J60 engine. Here's a Samaritan, the ambulance version, as you can see. And then just behind it is the Sultan, which is very similar to the Samaritan. It's just a command vehicle. Uh, five or eight's in here. And again, you can see all the cabling running for the trickle charges to make sure we don't... So yeah, a shed full of stuff. So yeah, that's uh, the walk through the sheds. I'll try to do another one later. Uh, maybe during the closure, if you find it of interest. So uh, yeah, thanks again for your interest. Um, take care, be safe, and we hope to see you again here before too long. In these difficult times, obviously your support is really valued. So please do keep following us on social media, do subscribe to our channel. And, and if you've got the opportunity, perhaps order something from our shop, uh, join one of our schemes like Patreon or our friends organisation and we'll try and keep going with giving you some content to keep you informed and entertained.